Hey YouTubers, it's Dansky. In this video we're going to be taking a brief look at the Pathfinder palette in Adobe Illustrator. So you can see here on the right, this is what the palette looks like. And there's lots of different options here and it's really a good idea to create different shapes and to explore all of these. But for this video, I'm going to be focusing on the ones that I use mainly, particularly in logo and shape design. So that is this one on the left here. So this is Unite, also uh, think of this as Add. So adding shapes together. The one next to it is called minus front. You can think of that as subtracting one shape from another. And this one in the bottom left is called divide. And this is quite good for breaking shapes apart and taking certain parts of shapes and uh, removing other parts. So these are the three main ones that I use, but by all means, feel free to play with all the others and kind of understand how they work because they all do something slightly different. Okay, so I'm gonna start by just creating a rectangle. I'm going to fill it with black and I'm just going to get rid of the stroke around the edge. Okay, now I'm going to go and create a circle and just give that color so you can see. So now the rectangle and the circle, they're both overlapping. So now I'm going to hold the Alt and Shift key. So Alt to create a copy, Shift to keep it perfectly straight and just drag across. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the add and the subtract feature in the Pathfinder palette and show you how these work differently. So what I'm going to do is select the rectangle and the circle here, go over to the Pathfinder palette and I'm going to click Unite. Now, as you can see it merges the two shapes together and if you press Command Y on the Mac, Control Y on the PC, you'll be able to see here we've still got two separate shapes, whereas this one has merged these shapes entirely. Okay, and you can't undo this. It's now become a, a new shape of its own. So when you want to subtract one shape from another one, what you'll do is select these two and you'll go up to subtract up here or minus front as it's called. And when you click this, the shape on top, so in this case, the red circle will effectively kind of punch out through the shape below. So you can see, and same again, just to show you what it is, it's actually permanently taken that shape out of the rectangle. If I go back a few steps and then select the rectangle and go to object, arrange and bring to front, and then do the same again, you'll see it. Uh, the rectangle is then kind of punching out through the circle. Okay. So now let's take a look at divide. So I'm going to create a few different shapes. <laughs> let's make them a little bit more wacky and interesting. There we go. Star, circle and a hexagon. And I'm going to make them different colors just for fun. Let's try and pick some colors that don't hurt my eyes. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap these shapes. And I'm going to go up to the Pathfinder palette and I'm going to click Divide. Now at first, nothing appears to have happened. But if you watch closely, when I click Divide, it adds anchor points where the lines of each shape intersect. So that's what it looks like in preview mode. And if I click Divide, you'll see here it's added anchor points where these shapes intersect. So it doesn't actually look the same. Uh, it doesn't look the same? That doesn't even make sense. It does currently look the same, but if I select the direct selection tool over here and I click on these individual parts, where the shapes intersect, it's now made those individual shapes and I can pull these out and this is incredibly useful okay so that was a brief introdu introduction to some of the kind of key uh, features in the Pathfinder palette that I find really helpful when doing kind of shape creation or creating logo designs because essentially logo designs even the, some more complex ones are all made up of shapes so once you kind of become familiar with the Pathfinder tool and how to create various shapes, 
actually you kind of understand how to to create more complex shapes with by using simple shapes if that makes sense so i hope that video was helpful if it was give me a little like below let me know what you thought in the comments below and uh, i'll see you in my next video